It's hard to believe that the course is almost over. Here we are in week 15, just two really mind-blowing topics to go. The first is the universe as a whole. Here's my friendly universe pillow, again, not to scale. This pillow, if you ignore the little smiley face, actually represents the data from what was called the Planck satellite. The Planck satellite was measuring the cosmic microwave background, the leftover energy from the Big Bang. And this week, as you learn about the conditions in the early universe, right after the Big Bang, you're going to learn why this leftover energy is so important. Because embedded in this light, in this energy, is a lot of information about the conditions in the early universe. And so, since we don't have a TARDIS like Doctor Who, astronomers can't physically travel back to the Big Bang. So we have to look out as far as we can. Remember, the further out we look in space, the farther back we look in time. And we have to look at all the clues that the universe has given us about what the conditions were like. A fraction of a second after the Big Bang. 15 minutes after the Big Bang. 500,000 years after the Big Bang. And once we've blown your mind talking about the early universe, we're going to look at another really important philosophical topic. Is there life elsewhere in the universe? Now, for myself, I certainly hope so. And I know the people at NASA certainly hope that there are other forms of life out there. But when we talk about the search for life, we have to distinguish between searching for any old life or searching for intelligent life, somebody that we can talk to. And both of those fields are going to be talked about in this week's lesson. I have here a little stuffed tardigrade, much larger than real size. You may have heard of tardigrades. They're also called water bears. They're nearly indestructible. They're very tiny microscopic critters. They can freeze them. They can put them in a vacuum. They can expose them to radiation. And they don't die. They're what we call extremophiles. They live under very extreme conditions. And so as we think about the possibility of life elsewhere, we have to really open our minds to the kinds of conditions under which life can exist. I mean, here on Earth, tardigrades can live under conditions that would completely kill you or I in, in a couple of minutes or less. So what makes us think that life elsewhere has to be anything like us. It could be like a tardigrade, or it could be completely different. So hopefully this last week of the course will not only keep, your, keep you amused and entertained, but it'll start having you think about some really important big questions about our place in the universe. Where do we fit in? Copernicus already told us we're not the center of the universe. But if we think about ourselves biologically, what other forms of life could there possibly be? And how would it change human society if we were to learn that there were life elsewhere?